overheard my son on the phone talking about my mom didn't want me to get the book, The 48 Laws of Power. She said it's demonic. I don't know if I use that word, demonic. Like, like he's starting to make me feel like a little bit, you know, I'm not gonna say the word, but it's just interesting, you know, generations, how, how uh, things change. I didn't say not to read the book. I never told my son not to read the book. I simply said that there were other books that I wanted him to read first. You don't just jump to the 48 Laws of Power. He'll be 14 tomorrow. You know, it's like, there's there's steps to this. You can't go from, from one to 10 overnight. You gotta, you gotta learn. And I just felt like what's more important is a spiritual foundation prior to reading a book like that. You know, I read the 48 Laws of Power, at least some of it. And my takeaway was, Man, like whoever wrote this book is kind of sociopath. I didn't think that it was, uh, you know, a righteous book. I'll put it that way. Number one law, never outshine the master, right? And so is the 48, law of pow 48 laws of power effective? Likely, right? On this physical realm, right, in this, on this earth that we live in, as far as dealing with people, knowing, being, just being realistic about people. People have insecurities, people can be jealous, people can be egotistical, you know, people often do not uh, work within their higher nature, they work within their lower nature, so just being realistic, yes. If you show up on the scene and you're shining too bright, the likely that there's there's going to be people who are going to want to dim your shine they're going to feel uncomfortable just by you being on the scene if you're shining real real bright this is the world that we live in okay so a, a book like 48 laws of power it is talking about the world that we live in however the master cannot be outshined trust and believe it is impossible that the, a true master can be outshined. There are a couple concerts, I've, I've been to tons and tons and tons and tons of concerts. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And um, two concerts stood out in particular where I'm sitting like, I'm on floor level, right? And the artist is on stage, I'm not gonna say who it was, but one, was, one is like a super duper um, well-known artist, super famous. and. I'm over there and I'm dancing up a storm because her show, you go to her show, you're gonna wanna dance. And she's just killing it on stage. And I'm dancing up a storm. And she turns to me, she looks at me and she said, sing. You can't outshine a master. You can't outshine a master. Another show I'm at, probably like one of my favorite artists of all time. I'm not gonna say who it was. I'm on floor level, dancing, dancing. What did she say? She's, I start singing, she's listening. Like, okay, yeah, okay, do that, do that. Rearrange that, rearrange that, right? Directing me like a composer. You can't outshine a master. I've been at shows before I'm dancing, I'm singing, I'm having a good time. There's been artists that have felt some kind of way about it. Like I'm trying to come to, come to their show and outshine them. It's impossible. You can't outshine, you can't outshine the master. And to take it one step further, a true master, because you have to understand with this whole thing, it's not a matter of, people and that's and that's the thing about it it's not ego right it's the message it's the philosophy it's the it's it's something that is it, you can't even put it into words it's an energy that it, that's passed down right so i was talking about like shaolin masters and like these monks that go meditate and i was talking about these martial artists you know um, these like kung fu masters and like an ancient 
tradition, you know, like Taoist tradition, um, you had to master certain things before you could become one of them, before you could become like a Shaolin master. And part of it was taming your ego, right? So you may go through, on your, on your journey to self-mastery, you may go through some very humiliating or humbling experiences because you have to tame your ego. Why do you have to tame your ego? Because it's not about you, it's about the message. It's about the philosophy. It's about the, 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 the practice. And so, if you're too caught up in yourself and lose sight of the fact that it's about the message, then obviously you're going to have some major insecurity when the next person shows up on the scene. Because you lost sight. It's not a matter of you. It's a matter of the message. And it works on both sides, as above, so below. So the adverse, the adversary, it's the same thing. Unfortunately, you know, with a lot of these like lower nature emotions, like jealousy and ego and pride and all of these things and vanity and, um, you know, all of these things, a lot of times with the adversary, it, these people are very disposable. We can talk about the music industry, which is really controlled by some very dark people. Why is it that it's, these artists are treated like they are um, disposable? Why is it that an artist that is dead is more of a commodity than a, a living artist? Because they select people who they know are vain, who they know are caught up in their ego and things like that, but they know will basically collect the most souls for the time being. And so, just like there's power working for good, there's power working for bad as well. And the objective is to collect souls. So who can, can have enough of conviction, right? While, um, you know, si singing and, and rapping or, or whatever, or entertaining, um, carrying a message, because it's about the message, right? So like I said, as above, so below. Like, if the objective is to kill, steal, and destroy, right? That's the, that's like the philosophy. That's like the doctrine, to kill, steal, and destroy. So, of course, he's going to be looking for people who are, are most effective to carry out that agenda, right? Who can best do these things? Who can best take our agenda and further it and, and get as many people down with that agenda and down with that team as possible? As above, so below. So for like the light or the, the righteous, if the agenda is you know, saving souls, if the agenda is truth telling, if the agenda is um, like getting people to feel good about themselves, positivity and all those things, we look for also people who is who's mo gonna be most effective in um, carrying out that agenda. And so when you get too caught up in me and you forget about the agenda, that's what makes you disposable. And part of what your commitment is, is to, once you have reached a certain level as a master, you are literally supposed to be recruiting people to look for the next master. That's part of it. You have to hand it over. Like you have, like you have to, um, like you're actively searching for somebody to outshine, like I guess literally outshine you because, um, that that's, it has to keep going. We all have an expiration date on this earth. There's a time that all of us are gonna pass away. And so for our preservation of the agenda, we have to always look for um, people. We have to always look for um, protégés to carry that on, to carry on what we're all about, our purpose. And so um, not only can the master not be outshined, because part of becoming a master is taming your lower nature, taming your insecurity, taming your jealousy, taming your arrogance. Because in order for you to be able to become masterful, you have to understand that you haven't mastered things, right? That's how you become masterful. And so if I think like, right, like I'm an artist, I dance well, I sing, I, um, 
I'm a lyricist, but I could be so much better of a vocalist if I had a vocal coach. But if I'm like, no, I'm the best singer in the world, there's no room for improvement. So in order for you to become masterful, you always have to understand that, you're, that you are not there yet. And so that's taming your ego, that's taming your lower nature, that's taming all of those things. And then when it's time for show, this showmanship, you know, when it's time for you to put on a show, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put that all that on, you gotta, you know what I mean? Hip hop, for example, it's like Cam was talking about last night, hip hop is competitive. You know, Charlamagne says it all the time, hip hop is a competitive sport. You show your bravado, you get up on stage, you, you know what I mean, you show what you have, but when it comes to learning, when it comes to becoming masterful, that's when you put that ego aside, you put it in your pocket, right? You just use it as a tool. And so it is absolutely, in my opinion, if it, if it is a true master, it is absolutely impossible to outshine the master. Until later, guys, peace.